Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing well. Today is another follow-up video on our Aston Barkley auction haul. And uh, if you haven't seen that video... What are you waiting for? Do it! I'll put the link up here. This is the Honda CRV that we bought for 2,650 quid plus fees, which ended up being quite expensive on this one, around about 480 quid. They shouldn't be. I think they've given me a credit, so... Um, we'll get around to figures towards the end, so I don't think it's cost me quite as much, but uh, yeah, let's have a look around this car. And here it is, our 2007 Honda CRV. Now, I have to admit, when I bought this, I thought it was a, a diesel. I just made the assumption. You know what they say about assumptions, it's the mother of all f***-ups. Um, you know, hopefully it won't be that bad, but it is actually a two-litre IVTEC petrol engine which drives very nicely is incredibly smooth but does mean that the tax etc is about 360 pounds per year for this I think um, and perhaps not quite as desirable as it may have been if it was diesel but nonetheless I think this is quite a smart looking thing uh, it's Honda it's super reliable I don't think we'll have too much trouble selling it especially nicely equipped like this once we've done some titivating so Let's have a more in close look and we'll walk around and talk about it. So front corner, first thing that jumps out is these alloy wheels. They definitely want ideally a refurb, but I don't know if we're going to do that at this price point. We might just do a bit of a either we'll do an in-house spray job on them or we might just give them a touch up just so they're all silver. It will at least look a lot better. It depends what we're going to do, whether this is going to be retailed from here, which I am now tempted to do, or whether it's going to go down the farm down the side of the car nothing really jumping out it looks pretty good there's a little ding here it's a bit dusty at the moment what I don't know well, how well it will show up on camera is all the paintwork swirls and this paint someone has been at this doing a bit of a DIY job well I mean hopefully no one paid for this with a polisher and put swirl marks in it so if you are responsible for having polished this car, step away from the polisher. Do not do it. Contact us. We can polish it properly for you, which we will do. Rear wheel. Also, paintwork's flaking. It's strange how it's gone this way, because I think this is the original colour. Um, but it's obviously like a black alloy or something underneath, or a black primer. But, yeah, it could certainly be improved, if not completely repaired. Uh, just had Jordan come out and say that we've got a car sport for more customer here. So I'm gonna to have to go inside and sort out some payment for that. Hopefully the bank aren't too funny with that. I spent a lot of money today. And in fact, I spent about 45 minutes on to Santander fraud this morning because we we're buying a very nice E-Class coupe from a chap called Mark in Newbury area. And uh, they did not like that I'd spent maybe, well, a lot of money today. So let's see how we get on with this one quickly. And then we're back to the CRV. Right, payment for a little Citroen C1 sorted after another half an hour on the phone to Santander. I could actually just cry today. It's been one of those days just on the phone constantly. You get through the fraud department and then they just hang up on you. So that's great when you've got customers sat there waiting to get a payment from you. It just doesn't look very good, does it? So not impressed with Santander today, but there we are. Let's get back to the CRV. So yeah, good tread on here. Uh, it's an ovation. I'm not quite sure what we had on the front. That's another ovation. So. Fingers crossed we've got a full house here going on of the ovations. Um, looks pretty good on the back. Nothing really jumping out at me that's bad. Lost a bit of sort of like plasticky trim on the, if you can see that, on the parking sensor there. But other than that, okay. Looks okay down this side again. Maybe you can see a bit more of the paint swirls. I can never tell when I'm looking through the camera what you can pick up on, but usually, you can see more than I can, to be honest. So this looks like the only good alloy wheel. Again, we got another ovation on good tread. This one's a bit curved up, not too bad. And this one is different. This one is a Safarik. Safarik, never heard of those. Now, our little wing uh, trim here has obviously been hot glued on before. This, uh, this looked okay when we were at auction, as far as I'm aware, and then Josh took a train, drove it back, and that was all completely bent out, like over here, and we've lost a little front bit, which is a bit of a shame, 
Can't really blame Josh for that because it looked perfectly fine when I went through the auction hall, as far as I remember. I certainly don't remember thinking I'm going to need to get a, a, you know, like an arch trim. But I've had to get an arch trim uh, and we'll get to that in the price. It's quite easily available on, on, on eBay, but you can only find them secondhand. And hopefully I've got the right one. But again, we'll talk about prices when we get to the end. Front all looks good with benefit from a new plate. It's got a bit of a stone chip in there. I can't tell if that's a scuff. Nope, someone just left some polish on there. Whoever did this amazing polish job on here uh, left a bit of polish on there. That shocks me because they've done such a good job otherwise. Um, you could probably do a little bit of a headlight restoration on there just to make this look its best. I think on the whole it's actually, you know, a tidy car. The, the lights pop in, everything looking shiny. Uh, the wheels finished up a little bit. They, it's going to look, it's going to look good in my opinion. Um, we got some kind of sticker residue and paint from where it had written sold at Aston Barkley, I imagine, when they parked it up for the night before we picked it up again. Um, but yeah, I don't really have any too many complaints about the outside. I think it still looks quite a modern car, that. Quite smart, nice in black, just needs a good polish up, sort the wheels and we'd be laughing. Let's have a look inside. So very standard Honda key of the era. And we do have remote central locking. It doesn't look like we have power fog mirrors, not at least off the key. And then inside, nice leather interior, electrically adjusted. We've got heated seats as well. We've got a twin sunroof, which is not opening, sadly, on a day like today. It's a bit dusty in here. I've had the dogs and everything in. And you might remember from the previous video, this was an automatic. This is what attracted me to this car in the first place, really. Um, automatics are always popular. And, oh, we do have a button. Will it work without the ignition on? Probably not. Let's put the ignition on. So we do have power fold mirrors. In they go, but you have to do it off the button. You might be able to program that off the key, but we haven't got that currently. So like I say, it's nice that it's an automatic version, makes it appeal to, you know, more people, I think. More people are swaying towards automatics these days and people who haven't got manual driving tests. I was actually only just learning the other day, someone was telling me that um, part of the reason a lot of people are going for automatic tests is because there just was a shortage of manual tests available from DVSA or DVLA or whoever is you know, the, the governing body for actually doing your driving test. Um, so people are just booking the automatic just so they can get driving, but it means that there's much higher demand um, for automatics than there was before. You know, it's just kind of like a, a bottleneck, I guess. People wanting automatics, which has driven up the price of them. So nice, comfortable. I mean, it's hard to tell because I've had the dogs in here. Um, there's a bit of hair everywhere. It's probably my responsibility there. And all these uh, dandelion, seeds that's all down to me from having been down the farm but it will clean up nicely got a nice center armrest with a cup holder in there we got armrests on each of the front chairs let's hop in here and have a look what we've got technology wise so we've got pretty much Everything really, we've got cruise control, we've got steering wheel controls, we've got auto lights, uh, auto wipers. Let's say we've got power fold mirrors. We have got navigation. We have got navigation, I was just checking. Now, what I don't think we've got is Bluetooth on this, but we will have auxiliary in somewhere. Where exactly, I don't know. We've got a dog poo bag full of wheel nuts, I believe. Look at those, lovely. I imagine someone's removed, either removed or fitted a set of locking wheel nuts. So we have, yeah, these just floating around in the center armrest, which is quite a nice handy system, quite big. Slideable little drawer in there with your Tesco token. Why you'd end up with that? Should have been gone on the charity bin, shouldn't it? Um, comes with a little ashtray, it's quite nice. Looks like it's never been used, which is good. Another couple of cup holders there. You've got this big sort of club foot handbrake. It's quite nice and ergonomic to use. There's even more cubby holes down here in the sort of center console. And obviously we've got our gear selector here, which is quite a neat little unit really, just it's not obtrusive, is it? It's nice that you can still get through the middle, put your shopping, slide your shopping through or whatever. We got twin glove box, top and bottom. 
we got all the original Honda books and radio codes, etc., which is nice. We have got service history as well. Here is our folder, two keys, and well, let's have a quick look at the service history now. Okay, so it actually came from an Arnold Clark Honda dealership. So those Arnold Clark plates on the front are actually the original dealer plates, but still they've got a stone chip in them now, so we will replace them. Uh, one, two, which way does it go? Uh, 10,000, 19,000, 30,000, 41, 52, 59, 71, 81, 92, 108, Oh no, they've got that they've gone in a different direction this time. So 92, 102, 108, 112,000. And they've done some, or well, we've done a timing belt change at 123,000, apparently. Um, normal, don't know what that says, normal service. It doesn't, oh, is it unless that's Greenford Auto Limited? I wonder if that's in the in the records we've got in here. I'll have a look through for that in a start. Let's do it now. Right, so it's not amongst there, but these uh, MOT slips are all from Greenford Auto Limited. So we could quite easily give them a call in Middlesex and find out if this was actually done. Considering it is stamped there, um, I'm tempted to believe it actually, considering there's an actual phone number and they've used them before. It's not just some random made up garage or one of those Bosch service stamps that you can get on eBay, so uh, fingers crossed we will check into that, but let's just assume it's been done, so that's good, because our mileage now is, ah, I left the ignition on and I've run the battery flat. Ah, oh, going to get the top done again, I have to talk to you about top done. Okay, I've grabbed the JS 3000 this time, I've shown the JS 1200 before, this is basically the same thing, just a bigger version, so you can crank bigger diesel engines etc with it but obviously it will also last longer and if you're using it for charging your devices everything you've got loads and loads of power here okay there we go just have to hold the boost button <laughs> that was close for the camera almost right on the belt so there we are JS 3000 doing the job no problem uh, and now we can hop in and I can tell you the mileage which is 124,494 so according to our book here it was last on 123.8 and it was done literally well a few days off a couple of months ago apparently so they'll definitely have that on their records won't we so maybe we'll phone them up in a minute because um, I don't seem to have the paperwork for it here. One other thing I want to do while we've got the engine running and a bit of power now is uh, it keeps asking me for a navigation disk, which we have got in our paperwork folder here. So let's see if we can't get this to give us some maps. DVD disk is not installed, so let's open it up. Oh, actually, I think the navigation disk goes in there. So. Eject. Okay, so we pop open that. There we go. And find the navigation drive. And we close it all up. And then hopefully, let's turn the volume down. Here we go, okay, touch screen. It's taking its time to think about it. Here we are, navigation, not the most modern in the world, but it is here and it is now working. So that's always reassuring. So as I've said in previous videos about uh, people such as valeters or movers around auction size, some of them supposedly have got light fingers and more pinch bits and pieces. So um, I think they take the navigation disks and SD cards out usually and put them in in a folder with all the paperwork so you know that it's there and there is zero chance of you know you telling a car and then the customer saying well hang on it has satellite navigation i saw the satellite navigation working in the pictures but since then it's gone missing i guarantee you that's the reason they do that is because that's happened and they're trying to avoid it so it now always ends up in the paperwork so still it's reassuring that we put it in and it has worked 
Um, other than that, we've got dual zone climate control. I've probably already said that we've got cruise control and all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, so now that we've got it running, let's have a little look under the bonnet. Okay, so here is our engine. The engine bay actually looks pretty clean. It's funny to see how much space you've got around this little two litre engine here. Looks like we've had a very recent alternator on here. No paperwork for that though, I have to say. I'm not gonna undo the coolant because it'll probably be a bit hot for that now. Um, let's have a quick look at the oil. <coughs> Jeez, that was on tight. Okay, so it all looks pretty clean. I can see down there the oil looks pretty good. Where's our dipstick on this? Right there, the big orange thing. Yeah, you can see the oil is really new in that. Backs up that it probably has had at least a service, if not its cam belt done recently. One thing I haven't done, because we got caught up with having to uh, get the jump pack for this, which I have to say, I don't think there's a problem with the battery on this. It's just that I brought it out here and it's a nice bright sunny day again. So I parked it up in a position where I'm going to film with it and put the ignition on, put the windows down. I probably just haven't turned the ignition off again. So it's been out here for a couple of hours, probably with the radio going. And here is our boot. And I quite like that it's got this two-stage shelf or double parcel shelf. I guess that would be a parcel shelf and this would be a load cover, wouldn't it? With its three individual bits on there. Just an added extra element of practicality. I really liked it. I used it the other day when I went down the farm put bash in the back, as you can probably tell by the paw prints. And I had some stuff junk under here and I had my carry case, which I keep my drone in so I could fly up, take pictures of how the building work and everything's going on down there. And it just sat on top of there. It's like having a little workbench in the back of your CRV. So I quite like that. We've got a full set of mats in here by the looks of it. And then we've got our spare wheel, a random rag, and a Tesco club card leaflet and carry bag. What a bonus. So on the whole, I think quite a decent little car really, other than some titivating, a uh, bit of a clean up, polish up. It's a quick wipe around the inside. It doesn't need too much really. It is quite clean in here other than the dog prints. Um, and yeah, this is good to go, especially with just having the cam back done or whatever. Uh, in fact, before we head out on the road, should we call up this garage and see if they can actually confirm and perhaps send us a, uh, a copy of the invoice for that cam belt. Well, I've come into the office to phone them and I think now that I've looked at it properly, out of the sunshine, that just says normal service. They've clearly just done a normal service and put it into the timing belt change section, probably because they've run out of space. So I've had a quick look at auto data and it's a timing chain anyway, with no interval. So it should be for the life of the car, doesn't need changing. So, um, Swings and roundabouts. It's had a recent service, that's great. We don't need to service it. Um, it hasn't had a timing belt or chain change, but then it doesn't need one. So the first problem with this car, which I noticed almost straight away, and you probably won't be able to miss, it is very creaky. Turning, especially if you're turning on the spot. I'll put a clip in here where you're just kind of like turning it on the spot. It creaks like crazy. And as you go over bumps, a bit like you can hear now, but probably be louder as we get further on, like this. <laughs> it's, it's hideous, isn't it? Now, my first thought was that this must be either a top mount or perhaps a shock absorber. Perhaps the shock absorbers had, you know, dried out and were squeaking or you know, I had a broken spring that was squeaking in the top of the top mount. But actually, uh, Steph's already checked this out for me and it is a bottom ball joint. It's just dry and hard and making so much noise, it's unbelievable. Uh, so in fact, we already got one of those sat in reception at work, ready to be fitted, but I wanted to do this video before we fit that so you could experience the creaky RV, the creaky recreational vehicle. As you can probably guess, it gets quite annoying. Good news is the radio in here is actually quite a decent quality, plenty of bass. So if you want to drown out that squeaky noise, you can. Not that you'll have to after today because we will get that 
we have to do a lower arm actually I probably didn't explain that but apparently you can only get it as a as a whole lower arm with the ball joint so that's what we've bought and I think it was about 120 quid uh, so not the end of the world especially as that seems to be about the only mechanical thing that I can find wrong with this car it handles well it drives well it's super comfortable these seats are really hugging um, and supportive they're heated it's a really nice place to be in it it's hard to if you can see past or hear past this constant creaking it's actually you know a really well equipped pleasant place to be it's not the fastest thing in the world i've pretty much got my foot flat to the floor there and it gradually goes about its business we don't seem to have a sport mode in this there is a separate button there's one button for releasing the gear knob and underneath that is a button which if you press that it goes into d3 comes up i think that's because we have a gear one a gear two then we have drive neutral reverse park so you can go down to lower ratios if you want to uh pick up a bit quicker etc and then perhaps you press the button for d3 i can't say i'm an expert on uh, japanese gearboxes but there are options there but you don't really have any flapper paddles you don't have a sport mode in this so you are kind of pretty much stuck with just the gear ratios that it has from the factory so if i put my foot down now and try and catch up with jordan's in front well it dropped down the gear quite quickly and it does pick up but being just a two liter petrol especially being a VTEC, renowned for making most of its power at the higher end, it uh, doesn't really make for talky cruising. You do attract a few uh, looks from people who are concerned for your welfare when you're driving this. Because it sounds pretty awful. It sounds like a creaky old wooden ship. One thing I really like about this, being a 2007 Honda, is that obviously it doesn't shout money like a Range Rover would that's coming towards us now, but it does kind of whisper intelligence, sophistication, practicality. This wouldn't look out of place in a reserved parking spot for your GP or dentist or your architect who's turning up to design your five million pound extension I think this would have been the thinking man's Freelander 2. If you'd have put this next to a Freelander 2 of a same age and mileage, I think this has aged better and the bills that you would have spent would be far less than the Freelander 2. And I think the Freelander 2 would have let you down far more times, you know, family holidays. It would be slightly more stressful when you're driving a Land Rover product and you've got the family and all your worldly belongings packed up with you and you don't know if it's going to break down the Forest of Dean and leave you stranded and have to make your return journey home on the back of an AA lorry. Well, your Honda CRV is not likely to do that to you. Now, sometimes I will try and complete the work that we need to do to a car in one video show you as it is and then do all the work and show you the finished article well it's probably not going to work with this car because it needs to go in the workshop for that lower arm it needs quite a lot of time polishing that's what's going to really hold it up then it needs plates and a good clean out inside then it's going to get listed etc so we'll talk about how much it's going to cost us excuse me what we need to get done and all i can say is follow me on instagram if you don't already shifting underscore metal and i will post a little reel once the car's done all polished up i'll show you a before and after in that video and uh just a little clip to show you how the car's turned out and it i think i've changed my mind originally i was going to sell this from the farm site as a little trade deal but no worries you're already pulling out in the road anyway but i think it's such a nice car or it certainly will be once we've done those few little touching up bits that it's well worthy of being on the forecourt here at Barrow motors uh so i'm gonna do that so let's hop in the office talk about numbers and see if i think this was still a good buy or not right then back to the board of profit and loss 
start at the beginning and work through our figures. So, as you would have seen in the previous video, we bid 2,650 for this car. Uh, the fees were actually about 480 odd quid. They shouldn't have been because I got put onto a new rate. So with that adjusted, it should have actually been 400, uh, sorry, 249.64. Uh, so I've hopefully had the difference credited against my accounts. Let's just call it 249.64. Obviously, I need to get that arch trim that ended up missing. I found one of those on eBay, delivered for $38.99, which is a lot for a bit of plastic, but then again, it's not really, is it? Then, obviously, I always put a price down for a valet. Normally, £10 if it's going on the forecourt, £5 if it's going down the farm, but this one I'm going to put 30 quid because it needs an awful lot of polishing. Um, it's going to take a lot of polish, pads, wear and tear, etc. So... That gives us a total expense of 2,968.63 pence. So, three grand, basically. Retail for this car seems to be about 4,600 pounds. So, assuming we sell it for that, we would have a gross profit of 1,631 pounds. 37 pence not bad at all possibly because i forgot the lower arm despite the fact that it was creaking at me throughout the entire video uh, i forgot to add in 120 pounds on that so it won't be 1631 pounds or whatever it was it's more like 1500 pounds still not bad at all but i can't believe i completely forgot it i mean we've got to actually sell it for that amount and to be fair it might not be too bad i mean that 4600 pounds the only ones i can really find of the same model the ex are about 5,000. So we're pricing it slightly under. Um, we can but see, but it's gonna be around about that figure. So assuming we make 1,631 pounds and 37 pence, our return on investment is 35.5%. So not only did I forget the lower arm, I got all my facts and figures completely wrong. That wasn't 35.5% return on investment in the first place, but forget that having taken the correct figures into account, it's actually 48.9% return on investment, which is much better anyway. I don't know what I was doing. I don't think I'd eat in this day, so. I'm very happy. We'll get it in the workshop now, do that lower arm, and when that trim arrives, we'll get that on. I think we're just gonna to touch up the alloy wheels. It's not worth spending 300 quid on getting them all of them done because then our profit comes down to about 1300 quid and our return investment comes right down. If someone really nitpicks at it when they come to look at it, then probably we'll negotiate, maybe split it half and half or something. Um, but obviously it is a, you know, what is it? A 16 year old car now. So it's not gonna be perfect. I think we can touch those wheels up, make them look a lot better. And like I say, make sure you follow the Instagram account uh, at shifting underscore metal and you'll see the finished product if you don't see it on barrymotors.co.uk and if you are looking to sell your car as always please do visit carsboughtformore.com fill out the form enter your reg uh, we will try and give you the best quote possible we'll send our truck out someone out to come collect it from you at work or at home whatever suits you and we do your bank transfer it gets paid into your account before it even leaves your site so none of this charging you fees for getting paid your own money and waiting several days for payment. We get it sorted for you straight away. And plugging my businesses aside, uh, please do make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you haven't already. And if you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. It helps more than you think. And I will see you in the next video.